Hello, my name is Jim Lee, and I'm so glad that you are joining me. Well, today our theme is the pillar of possibility. What do I mean by that? We're going to be talking about authoring the impossible. And so what I'm saying is that you and I are an author of the impossible. And when I felt into that, and I was really putting my energy into it, my mind says, you know what? That's really possible. That's a nice concept. You are an author of the impossible. And it says, my mind was thinking, so if you could do that, grow some hair. My logical mind believes that I can be an author of the impossible, sometimes, and on certain occasions. And I noticed that my mind has certain boundaries, and that's understandable. But I want to make a shift now. And there was a book by Lewis Clark, and it was entitled Alice's Adventure in Wonderland, in which a quote was this. Alice was talking to the queen. Alice said, there's no use in trying. One can't believe impossible things. And then the queen said, ah, no, 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 no. You haven't had enough practice. When I was your age, I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Whoa, what a mind-opening, heart-opening experience. There is only one impossible thing that I'd like for you to think about. You don't have to think about six. Just think about one. And just think about that you are an author of the impossible. I know that it looks like it's impossible, but hold on to that one possible thing. So what I mean with this is, let's you and I just stand in the energy of possibility. Not in particular, anything in particular, just the energy of it and feel it. It's possible. And so let's just say to ourselves now, it's possible and just stand in it. So if it doesn't happen today, we're still going to stand that it's possible because that's what possibility is. If it doesn't happen next week, what happens if we just stand in that energy? So the first thing that I want us to do is just to relax because this possibility that I'm talking about is not up to the human making. It's not about human doing, coming from a different place. So don't get frustrated. Just relax and remember this. We're a human being. And the human of us is limited. The human of us is finite. The human of us has limited thinking. Remember, there is another part of us, and when I'm talking about the other part, is that we are a being. The part of us that some will call a soul or energy or essence. This part of us is infinite and unlimited. So to be an author of the impossible, I'm saying, let's flip the script. Let's say that we are a being that is human. Now, the Bible has 37 Bible verses uh, on what it is to focus on the impossible and as a human being and the possibility with God. Now, I'm not going to read all 37, but there's a couple of them that I like. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is possible. But with God, all things are possible. Luke 1, 37. It says, for nothing will be impossible with 
God. And then Philippians 4, 13, it says, this is a goodie. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, when I read these scriptures, I like to put in the word love. And it adds something that my whole being can resonate with. So take a look at this. And it says, I can do all things. I can do all things. I could do all things, but not with myself. It is through love which strengthens me. Now we're getting to the point where we can actually execute it and be in a particular flow because we have a means of making this happen. So I'm inviting us to place our identity in the being part of us uh, that is anchored in love. Love has no limits. Love has no boundaries. Love, in fact, is undefeated. Love, I would just say, is our true place in our identity. And that's where we're going to focus our emphasis so that we can be the author of the impossible. So today, let's place our identity in love not the ego, not those thinking patterns, not the focusing in on lack and limitations. Let's think about it a little different. Let's open up. So think of Helen Keller. She did not have limited thinking. In fact, she couldn't hear, she couldn't see, and she couldn't even speak. But yet, she believed that she could do all things. She could do many things. Her mind did not limit her. Think of Mahatma Gandhi. With love and compassion, he didn't think of himself as just a finite, limited man who was born and raised in India. No, with love and compassion and with nonviolence, his being was able to overturn the English who ruled India at the time. And now there is an Indian who was elected prime minister to rule England. Go figure. See, this is what happens when we stand in something else other than a logical mind. Nelson Mandela, great example, was in prison for over 27 years and I... Thought. As a matter of fact, I knew that he would never get out of jail. In fact, that's where he would die. However, he wasn't thinking that. He was set free, and he became the first president of South Africa. Who would have thought of that? Now, this is the other thing that he did. He treated his jailers and the people that he was dealing with for all those years with love and compassion. He was not limited by the condition, limited by the circumstances, which were huge. That, I thought, was impossible. Something else is taking place here. I'm inviting us now to expand our thinking. This is the same power that was with Mahatma Gandhi and, and Nelson Mandela as the same thing that was with Paul when he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. This is the same power that's available to you and to me right here, right now. It is the power that will enable us to become, I would call, a can-do being. Can-do being. If you all remember uh, Roger Bannister in 1952, he broke the four-minute mile. Prior to that, it was like physically, people thought it was physically impossible for human being to run under a mile in four minutes. Well, not only did he do that, but he shattered the belief system around that. And shortly after that, people started breaking the four-minute mile. And even today, there are high schoolers that are doing it. So what was thought in 
impossibility. Once one person was able to expand their mind and said, wow, what's truly possible? So this is what I want you to do. Don't forget, don't forget that you have another part of you. Yes, you're human, but you have this being part. So we have the capacity to live in two realms simultaneously. I would call the fourth dimensional realm is the spiritual realm. Some people call it the kingdom of heaven. It is that dimension of wholeness. And then we have the human part of us, which is the three dimensional part of us that allows us to function in this three dimensional realm. But we, however, we are essentially cosmic midwives. We're bringing the possibilities from the fourth dimension into the three dimension. That's what we're here to do and to be. So whenever we meet a challenge and situation, whenever we cannot see our way through it, remember that we are a being who is an author of the impossible. Now, I like this quote is from Elena Fairchild, and it says this, you are welcome into this world, this world where love finds a way. There is nothing impossible for love. It is not bound by the mind. And because of this, all manner of miraculous grace works through it in endless creative variety. The great beloved, <laughs> I like this, the great beloved is a show off creating with such genius as to be breathtaking. So let's just say, that, oh gosh, the universe and the great beloved, the infinite present wants to work through the impossible, loves working through the impossible and loves to show off. Can we align with that? That, that to me is really exciting. So I'm inviting us today to ah, surrender to this love, surrender to love's way and detach from the expectations of how it should be and how it could be with our finite mind and just be open to the infinite ways that love can show up and work in a miraculous way. We are an author of the impossible. We are not the author, we are an author we bring our love energy to the condition and situation and we co-create a new possibility. So our affirmation that we have, and I'll leave this with you, as love's emergence, you and I are an author of the impossible. Go forth, create some wonderful opportunities for you in life but also others. You are an author of the impossible. God bless you.